there is a truly bizarre and unexpected space race going on between China and the US. This is a fight, make no mistake, to control the skies, to control the sun's energy and to control the flow of information and power. It's one that I had no idea about until recently when I learned what was really going on. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. I'll be at the fully charged live event in March next year, and I'd love to see you there in Sydney. I'll put a promotion code in the description below for 10% off tickets. So fully charged live, if you're not aware, if you haven't heard of it before, it's the biggest electric car show in the world, but it's not just electric cars. It's electric mobility, electric technology. There'll be lots of brands there. Make sure you come along if you can make it. Space-based solar power or SBSP refers to orbital systems that collect and harvest solar energy using solar powered satellites. These are enormous spacecraft with solar panels. Doesn't sound like it would work. But actually, it does. Solar energy is converted into microwaves or lasers and then wirelessly transmitted via high-frequency radio waves to a fixed point on Earth throughout the day. Once on the ground, a rectenna, which is a ground antenna, converts the electromagnetic energy into electricity and delivers it to the power grid for energy consumers. The main benefit of SBSP is its higher energy collection. And SBSP is unaffected by weather at any time of the day. Clouds don't affect it at all. Obviously, it's above the clouds. It can provide clean, reliable, and efficient energy for satellites as well. And people living in remote communities and disaster hit areas worldwide. Basically, you can beam the energy to wherever you want it to go. Sounds kind of like the Jetsons, but it's not. It's real. This is no cartoon. However, I think there's a bit more going on here. There's a bit of a power grab. It's not just about energy. It's also about controlling the skies, controlling space. The concept of collecting solar power in space isn't new, but in recent years, there has been a growing interest in developing SBSPs, partly due to pressure to meet national and international climate related goals and achieve national space plans. But it goes a lot further than this. In fact, China sees this as a part of their national security. While China, the US, Japan, India, Russia, United Kingdom, and the European Union are in the new space energy race to develop SBSP first, the two leading countries in this competition are clearly the United States and China. And clearly they don't like each other all that much. PV Magazine Australia says that in recent decades, China has become increasingly interested in SBSP and appears to be the leader in this area. In 2008, they say SBSP was listed as a key research program. That's 14 years ago. In March 2016, Lieutenant General Zhang Yulin, a national lawmaker and deputy chief of the Armament Development Department of the Central Military Commission, stated that China would make use of the space between the Earth and the Moon for solar power and other industrial development purposes. Zhang further linked SBSPs to China's national goals, declaring the Earth-Moon space will be strategically important for the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. In February 2019, construction of a US $29 million testing base commenced at Bishan District in Chongqing, Sichuan, China's Academy for Space Technology Vice President Li Ming stated that China expects to be the first to build a working solar power station in space with actual value. Currently, Chinese scientists expect to construct small to medium sized solar power stations to be launched into the stratosphere to produce electricity between this year and 2025. And they'll build a megawatt level SSPS in 2030. Megawatt level, that means they're planning on sending a lot of power from space down to the earth. In June this year, China announced it would launch an ambitious solar space power plant program in 2028, two years ahead of its original schedule. During the same month, researchers from Zidian University in Yi and in Yi'an, successfully tested a 75 meter high steel structure to divert solar power from outer space back to the planet. So clearly China is getting far along in their plans towards this goal. But what's the US doing? Although the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, began researching SBSP technologies after the Apollo program, which ran from 1963 to 1972, so 50 years ago, 
the enormous projected cost meant the idea was completely scrapped and not pursued. Nonetheless, there's been renewed interest in SBSP over the past few decades, including at NASA. The United States Space Force has also expressed interest, while the US Department of Defense is researching this technology for military purposes. There is also interest in SBSPs at American universities. In 2013, the California Institute of Technology established the space-based power solar power project after a donation of US $100 million. Last year, the university announced plans to launch an SBSP test array by 2023. However, there are some significant challenges that have to be overcome before this race will truly kick off. Once considered too expensive, today it's only a matter of time before this technology is achieved, creating a new age in clean energy. PV Magazine says that this will further result in opportunities for collaboration as well as assistance in deep space exploration programs and provide energy sources for moon bases and lunar surface operations. You never know, maybe Jeff Bezos's goals to put people on the moon where they would live could become a reality if they can get enough power from space and send it to the moon. SBSPs and space energy may also become key in what economist Dr. Pippa Malgram calls space-based solutions to Earth-bound problems. For instance, the resiliency of this technology means that it could be used as a backup energy source in the case of power shortages, blackouts, or attacks on energy infrastructure, meaning it's critical for national security. However, developing this technology is not without technical difficulties and challenges. One of the main challenges is the cost, including manufacturing, transportation, and the potential need for significant investment into transmission infrastructure. I mean, just getting these things into low earth orbit in space is very expensive in and of itself, which is why companies like SpaceX are completely integral to this process because their costs are much lower than the competition. Other challenges to consider are the efficiency of wireless power transmission, the vulnerability of solar panels to space debris that can potentially get smashed by space debris, and the impact on the environment and people. Nonetheless, it is expected the cost will come down given the increasing interest from private companies in this area and recent technological advances. Currently, China is progressing at a faster and more concerted pace. They're fully committed to this idea. They're fully committed to sending solar energy from space back down to Earth. As the country is already a contender in the global clean energy race and harbors ambitious space plans, China could become the leading space power if it develops this technology before the US and the rest of the world. This could result in SBSP becoming an essential element of China's Belt and Road Initiative, with Beijing offering this form of clean energy to other countries alongside present opportunities for greater economic development and connectivity. Of course, these space Panels, these solar panels could also be used for things like internet transmission, like SpaceX's internet service. In a broader context, the increased interest in developing SBSPs and space-based energy may extend the current geopolitical domain of competition to geospace dimensions. The growing rivalry between the US and China on Earth has already resulted in competing plans to achieve scientific and economic hegemony in space, including for space energy, naming, mining, manufacturing, and space-based weapons. But most importantly, there is the increasing militarization of space due to competition for military dominance. Currently, China's People's Liberation Army, the PLA, which don't exactly separate to, which don't exactly try to liberate people, handles all space planning, with Beijing having already designated space as a military area. This adds to China's 2019 white paper, which emphasized a growing role in space for the PLA's Air Force. A recent report also said that China now has the technology, hardware, and the knowledge to coordinate a war from space. Would this give them an additional advantage if that war were to happen? It could. To further support its space ambitions, China has increased the size of its total operational space fleets by around 70%. The US-China great power rivalry further adds to the militarization of space, with both countries wanting to build lunar bases by 2027, China and the US by 2025. Based on existing rivalry, competition between the countries to build bases on planets such as Mars is actually possible. In this context, 
it is not unrealistic to imagine the existing geopolitical and geoeconomic tensions on Earth could also be found in outer space and could also eventually be found on Mars. Could there actually end up being a land grab on Mars? Well, yes, there could be. In fact, there likely will be. So what's going to happen? Well, despite the geopolitical climate and tensions between the US and China, which have recently built significantly, the recent release of NASA's moon to Mars planning suggests we are another step further towards living and traveling between planets. Does this sound too futuristic? Does this sound like another Elon Musk Mars pipe dream? Well, no, it doesn't. The future of the human race is most certainly going to be interplanetary. The question isn't a matter of if, the question is a matter of when. Will there be space wars at some point in the future? I believe it's very, very likely. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.